Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm the King Live, and today we're going to be introducing to you a tactic that top tier Valorant players are using to help make sure that they have the best start they can possibly have in their Valorant games. The way they are doing this is by abusing how cost efficient the Sheriff Pistol is so that they can build up an economy early on in the game and maximize the amount of gun rounds they have throughout the half. There's a number of different pros and cons to the strategy that can be difficult to keep up with at times, but that's why we're making this guide to help you best understand when buying a Sheriff is in fact the best tactic for you and when it maybe isn't such a good idea. But before we get into it, I'd like to introduce our question of the day, which is who is your favorite Valorant streamer to watch right now? I personally watch a lot of Flexinja and Sean Garris because I'm an Omen main, but there are so many streams in the Valorant community, I'm excited to hear what you all are watching. Anyway though, the first thing we need to focus on is why you run the Sheriff in the first round. When you buy a Sheriff on pistol rounds, you're sacrificing the ability to buy any abilities as well as armor. So what do you get in return for this? Well, on pistol rounds specifically, the Sheriff is the one pistol that will always one hit players when you hit them in the head. The Ghost is very similar to the Sheriff on pistol round, but if your opponents have armor, the Ghost will not one shot. And because of the frenzy nerfs, there's an increasing amount of players who are now running classic and armor in response to the nerfs. And unfortunately, the more prominent classic armor becomes, the less useful having a ghost is going to become. Because as long as the target has armor, the ghost is still going to take two shots to kill a player, even with a headshot. And the classic will also only take two headshots or one headshot and two bodies, which can easily be accomplished with the right click. But you didn't need me to tell you that the sheriff is stronger than the ghost. No, the real reason players are running the sheriff on pistol rounds is because you can carry the sheriff into the second round of the game, and it's still a very strong gun to have for the anti-eco that is to come. It is incredibly common second round for players to force buy and buy up specters and stingers, but when you already have a sheriff, it can really defeat the purpose of doing so, because the sheriff is already a really strong gun. It only takes one bullet to kill a target, and if you're a decent shot, you can easily get by with a sheriff by just playing smart angles and abusing that one head headshot that other guns do not have on this round. Not only that, but because you can carry your sheriff into the second round, your economy is set up to be super strong right from the start of the game. On a character like Jet, for example, if you win the first round with the Sheriff, you can carry it into the next round, you can buy full armor and all of your abilities, and still have 1500 credits left. This means even if you lose the round, you will still have 3400 credits, which is enough to force buy rifles with light armor, which is still pretty decent going into the third round, where they're likely going to have rifles anyway, so the extra HP won't make a big difference. If they headshot you with a Vandal anyway, it's not going to make a difference if you have 150 health versus 125 health, You're, it's still going to kill you. But if you win the second round, you should have 4500 credits, which could easily get you two gun rounds in a row, even if you lose the first one. One thing that is not being mentioned here, however, is the credits you get for kills as well as planting the spike. This means that if you land just a couple kills throughout these rounds, you can easily put yourself in a position to buy an Operator on third round, which is why you're seeing many Jet players running the Sheriff on pistol round recently. It's just simply the best way to build up a fast economy in Valorant, and that's why we're going to take a look now at a couple of top tier Valorant players who have been abusing this tactic to help them win more games. Before we get into it though, if you guys are serious about improving, I highly recommend heading on over to skillcap.com to unlock our hyper improvement system. We have up-to-date lineups, courses on how to improve with all agents, smurf commentaries where a high ranked player walks you through how to carry in your rank, and so much more. It's also backed by a rank improvement guarantee, so there's nothing to lose by giving it a shot. If you're struggling to climb in Valorant, there's so much we have to offer at skillcap.com, so I highly recommend checking it out. Moving on though, the first player we're going to be taking a look at who utilizes this tactic in pretty much every game is popular content creator Flexinja. Something that is important to point out here is that you probably shouldn't do the Sheriff tactic on every single agent. Realistically speaking, there are some agents that benefit more from utility on pistol rounds than others. Going along with that, there are some agents' signature abilities that are a lot stronger than other agents. It probably wouldn't be a great idea for you to do a Sheriff Force Buy on a character like Breach because his signature ability isn't very great and his flashes are super strong, so it's probably a better idea for you to buy classic armor and two flashes. But for a character like Omen, his smokes are free, which are easily the most important part of his kit, so buying a Sheriff isn't a terrible idea because the only other good option right now is blinded armor. Another agent you'll see do this a lot is Jet, because her utility isn't very important on pistol rounds and her dash gives her the ability to get out of bad positions, which is amazing when you have a Sheriff. But what I really want to emphasize for you all here is how Flexinja's economy builds up throughout these rounds while he's playing in this Twitch Rivals tournament versus other strong players like Asu and Tens. He starts out the round with a Sheriff in U-Haul on Bind, making sure to take engagements that favor his Sheriff. After landing the first kill onto the enemy Phoenix, Flexinja realizes he is about to be pushed and falls back towards Heaven both to take a better position but also to receive a heal from his Sage. 
playing heaven on pistol rounds is not normally a great position, but when you have a sheriff, the longer range fights you can take, the better, because you will almost always have the advantage. From this position, Flex Ninja picks up a second kill onto tens and then focuses his attention towards showers to stop them from pushing out towards sight. After missing a few shots onto Asu, Flex Ninja falls back and relies on good crosshair placement to pick up the final kill for the round. Because Flex Ninja picked up three kills this round and survived with the sheriff, he's able to carry it into the next round where he buys full armor and now has an extra 900 credits from those three kills. After purchasing full armor and all of the abilities, Flex still has 2000 credits to spare, which is definitely a nice chunk of change to have left over. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, all right, yeah, Flex can get away with this, but my aim isn't nearly as good as his, which you're probably right to think. It's not likely that your aim is as good as players like Tenz or Flexinja or any of the top tier players. However, I really want to showcase how it's not necessarily about how good their aim is, it's more about the positions that they play and the fights that they take. Just like that last round, how Flexinja ran towards Heaven to take a second engagement rather than continuing to challenge the enemies in U-Haul, it's all about your positioning. In this next round, notice how Flexinger rotates over towards B site and decides to take the engagements with the enemies from an angle where the enemies can only see his head. He knows the enemies may have forced up stingers, which can be really scary up close, but if he forces them to take engagements where he has the upper hand, it's going to be a lot more favorable for Flex. Because of this smart play, Flexinger picks up the second round and rolls into the third round where he purchases a Vandal and still has 2400 credits left over. This is the perfect setup because even if he loses the third round, Flexinger will still have enough credits to buy on the fourth round. You'll notice going into the third round though, Flexinger actually doesn't decide to purchase full armor again. The reason for this is because he'd be investing another 1000 credits into the round while his team is currently doing what we call a bonus round. This is where rather than forcing up rifles on the third round of the game, the players who survived the previous round will keep their specters or whatever guns they picked up and use them on the third round for a chance to build up their economy even more for the next buy round. Generally, your team will not be favored to win a bonus round, which is why it's called a bonus. If you win it, it's great. If you lose it, it's not a big deal. Flexinja understands this, and that's why he's not investing any more than a Vandal into this round, because he wants to be able to purchase for the fourth round of the game. Now you'll notice Flex's team does actually end up winning this round, and because of that, at the start of the fourth round of the game, by the time Flex has bought full armor, he still has 4,500 credits left over. It's only the fourth round of the game and his economy is already out of control, and this is all possible because of the first round Sheriff buy. Now moving on, let's showcase why this tactic is popular on a character like Jet recently. To do that, we're first going to look at a few rounds from Wardell's stream where he's playing Jet on Split. He starts out pistol round using the Sheriff and decides to take the first engagement into B tunnels. He overextends in this engagement just slightly, but he's able to get away with it because of his dash, which is always able to bring him to safety if he needs it. After dashing away, Wardell, similarly to how Flexinja played it on pistol rounds, plays a headshot angle that will make it difficult for enemies to land a shot onto him. After landing a second kill, he gets a call from his teammate that the breach is low in mailroom, meaning he only needs to tag him once in the body for a kill, so Wardell gets aggressive and picks up a third on pistol round. Even though Wardell dies here, his teammate sees his sheriff on the ground and gives it back to him at the start of the next round, effectively letting him run a sheriff armor on the second round. Because Wardell didn't need to force up and was able to run sheriff again, even though his team does end up losing the second round, in the third round Wardell is still able to force up a rifle in an attempt to give his team more of a chance. Now normally it's not a great idea to stagger your team's buys like this, however if you're playing Jet you can sometimes get away with it because your ultimate can be used as a budget rifle. Unfortunately Wardell ends up losing the third round of the game as well, but ends up bringing it back and picking up the win with his knives on the fourth round, bringing the match to an even 2-2 and putting his team now on the first full gun round on the fifth round of the game. Even though he had a bit of a rocky start at the beginning of the game, moving on to round 5, Wardell is effectively on his third gun round in a row when you count his knives, which is something you can't really get away with on any other character, and a lot of it has to do with the extra credits he received from round 2. Now I think it's incredibly important for me to note that the Sheriff strategy is not going to be a good idea for everyone, and it is still a fairly aggressive tactic. As I mentioned before, you don't need to be Wardell or Flexinja to make use of this, however, you do need to be decent with the Sheriff and confident with your aim. Primarily, this is a strong tactic if you tend to be winning a large majority of your gunfights in your rank. This is a strong tactic for players who believe they are better than most of the players at their rank. The goal of buying the Sheriff in the first round and carrying it into the second round is to build up a strong economy so that you can be using rifles more often than your enemies and for strong players this is really going to favor them. If you're not feeling confident in your aim though there's no shame in playing in a way that's going to favor you more. You are not required to buy a sheriff on pistol rounds when you're playing jet just because Wardell does it sometimes. To showcase a similar tactic that is a little bit safer we're going to be taking a look at a professional player Shazam as he is starting his round with a ghost instead of a sheriff but still 
going to be utilizing the same saving tactics that we discussed before. Shazam chooses to start the round with a ghost as well as two smokes and an updraft, rather than purchasing a sheriff because it gives him a little bit more of a safety net within the round in case it doesn't go as smoothly as planned. By having two smokes available, it will strengthen Shazam's options throughout the round and make it easier for him to position in case he needs to defend a site or potentially retake on the first round. Another strength of the ghost versus the sheriff is that if you miss a few shots, at least you still have 15 shots to spray. With the sheriff, you need to be careful because you only have six. As we mentioned before, on pistol round, the ghost is still a one hit to the head on unarmored targets at most ranges, so the ghost is not a terrible alternative to the sheriff. Another positive to this strategy is if you end up losing the first round, if you spent credits on abilities, those abilities that you didn't use will still carry over to the next round, so you won't have to worry about repurchasing them. You'll notice as Shazam goes into the second round, he opts to just buy full armor, keeping his ghost and not choosing to purchase his remaining abilities here. This is done because if Shazam wins the second round, he wants to be able to buy an operator for the third round. The Ghost unfortunately isn't as good of a weapon to have on second round as the Sheriff, but it's still not terrible. One of the biggest flaws with the Ghost versus the Sheriff second round is that players have been forced buying a lot second round after losing recently in the meta, and the Sheriff is a lot better versus armored opponents than the Ghost is. But the Ghost is by no means a terrible option, and considering it's a bit safer to use, this might be the direction that many players prefer to go. Moving on to the third round, as we said, Shazam is going to pick up an Operator, and off the back of the win with this Operator, his team is able to set up a stable economy, which helps them quickly capture an advantage in the game and set themselves up for a victory. You can do this exact same save for an operator with the sheriff tactic that we talked about earlier, and as we mentioned earlier with the sheriff, you're going to give your team a better chance on the second round. However, for a lot of players, they will likely feel more comfortable doing this save with a ghost, which is why I wanted to present this as an option for players. If you are an op user though, this is likely going to be one of the strategies that you want to use, because this is by far the fastest way to get an operator in your hands in Valorant. However, something important to note is that buying an operator is a big investment, and if you end up losing your operator on the third round, you're basically starting over in terms of economy, and the next few rounds could be pretty rough. This is nothing new to op users though, I'm sure, so I won't dwell on it. Lastly, if you wanted to see more awesome guides like this one that help you improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you've always wanted, then be sure to head over to skillcap.com, link in the description below. The main purpose of this guide was to introduce you to a tactic that a lot of higher tier players are using recently to build up their economy. Honestly, it's incredibly enticing to me after watching a bunch of streamers VODs, you can build up a crazy advantage with the sheriff tactic that just carries over throughout the entire game. I don't expect nor do I recommend that every single player goes out and buys sheriff pistol rounds after watching this, but mainly I just wanted to introduce it as an option so that you know how to use it effectively. That's going to do it for this guide though, and if you haven't already answered our question of the day which was, who is your favorite Valorant? streamer to watch be sure to leave your reply in the comments below i'll be responding to some of you in the comments as per usual other than that my name is the king live and we here at skillcapped want to thank you all for watching we'll catch you in the next one